Hi. For this session, I'm going to take a look at uh, Smokey Babe, who was also known as Robert Brown, which was his real name. Smokey Babe and his rendition of uh, uh, a really unique bit of guitar picking, a song called uh, Bad Whiskey Blues. But before we get into the tuning and the uh, talk about his picking style, I'll let you listen to the original recording. It's just three verses long. We're going to focus on the first verse and then talk about the variations later. But I want you to give, uh, give you an opportunity to listen to the whole song so that you can, you can come back and pick up ideas later on after you uh, learn the basics. Here we go. Here's Bad Whiskey Blues by Smokey Babe. Talking all I'm here. I've been looking back with the beaver. In standard tuning, take down the, the bass C, two steps down to D, just near enough for now and then we can adjust later. The high E down to D, run your fingers down and you find the second string. tuning down as well. Don't worry about getting the guitar perfectly in tune. Uh, tuning is actually my, my worst fault but if you can get the authentic feel often the tuning if it's a little bit out it doesn't make a lot of difference. I once put a, a rendition of uh, Robert Johnson's Me and the Devil blues on, uh, on YouTube and I got some really great comments and one of the most interesting comments was that this sounds authentic and old. The timing is slightly off, it's not quite in tune, it's perfect. And that just about says it all. Okay, we've got the, the guitar tuned down to open G, or near enough. There's a couple of things to note before we look at the detailed tuition. First of all, there are very few recognisable chords in this tuning that, uh, that are used in this blues. The first one you'll notice is this, just a very simple chord with two fingers. Move that finger over, form this chord, and at one point we're going to play an A 
a long A shape on the fifth fret. And really, these are the only chord formations that we'll use, that we could call chords. We're going to use a bottleneck, high up on the fretboard, also up to the fifth fret, to give it a nice delta feel. Although whether this is a delta blues or not, I'm not really sure, because it's a bouncy, lovely style. It is an open G, but it, it's got a kind of a Piedmont ragtime style to it. But it's quite unique in its picking pattern. I use a glass bottleneck with a thick wall, because the thick wall gives me a nice slow vibrato, gives a nice mellow sound, a rich sound, and I wear it on my third finger. It frees up two fingers for some of the chords, and also frees up the little finger for the longer chord. The thing to notice when you're using this and you're forming chords is that it's quite easy to clack the bottleneck on the fretboard, so you have to be quite careful in what you're doing. Now it's often been said that the bottleneck style of playing is the easiest style to learn. You just put the, the bottleneck on the string. And that's it, you, you form the, this lovely this lovely rolling sound. And if you don't quite hit the fret properly, then because of the nature of playing with a bottleneck, you can roll the bottleneck backwards and forwards and search for the note. That way it seems as though you know what you're doing. <laughs> okay. Sometimes when uh, uh, Robert Johnson and Smokey Babe uses the bottleneck for the high notes on the little string, I use my finger and I just vibrate it a little bit. If you listen to uh, all of Robert Brown's recordings, you'll find that uh, he's only got one riff a bit like Brown and McGee and a couple of other couple of other guitar players. They they found something that worked for them and they tended to use it for almost all of their repertoire. He did vary it a little bit, sometimes he didn't use a bottleneck, sometimes he used a bottleneck. But the actual riffs and the, the dynamic style of this recording is quite unique. I don't think I've heard another quite like it. So it's well worth studying what he did. Now, although Smokey Babe used a monotonic type bass, monotonic is to say a heavily damped thumb strike, just on one or two strings, like Hopkins, he would double this up to uh, create a kind of a heartbeat. Sometimes we would play on the treble strings at the same time. Now to do this, I find quite difficult, particularly when you have to sing as well. So when I'm performing this, I would tend to use the one beat. And if I'm not singing, I'll try to use the two beats. But I've also found that for me, it works much better if I'm just waiting to sing, for example, and I might be playing this. I might play this. So I'm alternating with my thumb across two strings and then my finger backwards and forwards. But after the thumb stroke I would damp with my fingers on the higher strings. The difference is hardly noticeable and it depends where I am in the song. So sometimes I'll play this, damp with the palm of my hand, and sometimes this. So I can damp with the palm or my fingers on the strings. Gives you a lot of flexibility and you'll learn how to put this into the song as you move through it. Now let's take a look at the, uh, the detailed tuition for the first verse. There's a very short introduction with just two lines of tablature and then the first verse which I transcribe fairly faithfully and then there's some variations that I add for the second verse, the performance. So we'll look at the basic idea first of all and then at some of the variations that I, I include. I tend to make a variation or pick up a variation from the original and mix and match in a verse to make it more interesting. And uh, later on we'll see how I do that. 
Here's the first tablature and the first section for uh, the introduction to Smokey Babe's Bad Whiskey Blues. I'll play the sections com complete and you'll see both my hands at the normal speed and then later on you'll see the tablature with my right and left hand. Let's go.
Before taking a look at some variations we can play with this song for the other verses, I just want to take uh, a few minutes to talk about the singing. I assume that uh, you'll want to sing along with this tune, uh, and I, I certainly do. I think it's a great, a great tune. Once you get your hands around the, the picking pattern, then you'll start, you, you want to start putting the words in there, making it a real song, and hopefully perform it in public. It would be a great song, for example, to play on the street or in a noisy club. But it's not too obvious how these words fit in. And when I first listened to this original song by Smokey Babe, I didn't catch a single word. I had to play it over and over again because the words are very fast. They're delivered in a slurred kind of a, uh, a dialect, which is hard to pick up. This song gives me the impression that mostly it's an instrumental, but the words are thrown in there to make it a bit more interesting because the words, the time spent uh, on the, the actual verse lines is very, very short. They're delivered very, very quickly. And you'll notice that, what, like many, many blues men, the words are delivered when there's not a lot happening on the guitar. And this is intentional because it's, it's just difficult to, to play a complex pattern while you're singing. Some people could do this, like Blind Blake, Big Bill Brunsey, Reverend Gary Davis, but many, many people prefer to just vamp along with a little beat while they sing so they don't have to worry about where their fingers are going and this is evident in this song. It begins with a very short intro and then he starts to sing. Now while he's singing after this high note he's playing on the basses either with his, his thumb, just doubling up on the beat, or using his finger as well. Whichever is comfortable to you. And he starts to sing. I've been drinking bad whiskey, baby. And then he moves right up to the 12th fret with a bottleneck after he's finished the line. So it's quite easy to sing to. I've been drinking bad whiskey, baby. And then... He lets that slide right back down to the fifth and he goes back to the, the basses. I've been talking all out my head. And then the bottleneck comes into the fifth fret. So each time that he sings it's very simple and then he moves into a kind of a, a variation, a riff either on the bottleneck, high on the neck or lower down on the fifth. And then he starts to sing again. I've been drinking bad whiskey, baby. I've been talking all out of my head. So talking all out of my head, he's just got the, uh, the bar across the fifth fret. I'm just talking all out of my head. And then back to the bottleneck. And then on the last line, I got home last night. A young man was in my bed. And we're ready to sing again. It will be a bit slow, but it's well worth the trouble of taking time to do it. Because once it starts to flow and fit together, then it becomes easier every single day. If you just try that, when you're practicing just five minutes a day, you'll be amazed in a few weeks how well that comes on. Now let's take a look at some variations you can play. There are basically three verses to the song and a kind of musical break in the middle. And the way, the way that I approach this is to listen to the whole thing and then pick up on riffs that I hear and I find pretty attractive and I realize I can fit these in so that every time I sing a verse I can make it a little bit different. Uh, this is uh, a very good thing to do when you're playing in public or even for yourself. You don't want to play every verse exactly the same. You want to add some variations. These are uh, two or three variations that I recommend you try once you're very comfortable with playing and singing with the first verse, with the tablature as shown. In the first section of the verse, clip one, we're going to vamp, 
I've been drinking bad whiskey, baby. And then the tab shows that he moves up to the 12th fret. But instead of this, I'm going to do this. Which is a, a little riff that he throws in there later on in the song, which is quite attractive. And you can add anything you like that you pick up, like I added there, that just slipped in. But the tablature I'm going to show you is, uh, is this. So that takes a place of... It's the same kind of timing. And then back to the song. Here's how it goes. I've been drinking bad whiskey, baby. And then back to the, the bass strings to start the next line. Here's the tablature, and this is how to play it. Now in clip four, we start to sing. I've been drinking bad whiskey, baby. And then we vamp. So normally the verse clip four and five go like this. I've been drinking bad whiskey, baby. I've been talking all out my head. And then up to the bottleneck. This variation goes like this. I've been drinking bad whiskey, baby. I've been talking all out my head. And here's the tablature. I've been drinking bad whiskey, baby. I've been talking. And in the last section, the tablature we learn goes like this. And this is a variation. Here's the tab. The important thing here is to note that as long as you keep the feel and that lovely timing and that bouncy style, you can play around with this song as much as you like. I recommend that you do learn these variations and any other variations that you hear in the original song. Go back and listen to it again and again. Once you learn these variations, you'll find that once you start to play this song, that you'll come to a point in the song where variations can happen, and it's like having a, a, a crossroads with three or four exits. You can get, as you approach that crossroads, you can choose which variation you want to play. And often this comes very quickly. You don't even know which you're going to play at that time. It's a little like improvisation. So you're moving along on the song and then you suddenly choose this variation or that variation and instead of being a conscious decision you find that you'll just add it because it just comes to you at the time. And this is a, gives a, a great feeling of immediacy and fluency and uh, it's very appealing for the audience. They're, they're happy within the main structure of a blues song because it's a cliche, the structure of a blues song but we like little surprises inside that structure. So every time a variation comes along that moves us out or catches our ear, then this is good. It what make, it's what makes a song appealing. I hope you have a lot of fun with this. Uh, if you've got any questions or any comments at all, please get in touch with me. I wish you the best of luck. Bye-bye.